And then they're also present uh, younger kids. So let's take a look at uh, these, these two images of this girl age um, uh, 10, and then she's 20 here. And you can see her darker rings, but she's still got them preserved at the age of 20. So these rings start to dissipate, uh, not because you get older, but because you get more disease. Do you see this eye here with the white ring? Yes. Yeah, so that's what happens. You lose your dark ring, and by the time you're in your 60s and your 70s, you get this layer of phospholipids that start depositing around the iris of your eye, and you get, instead of a dark ring, you get this white one, and there it is up there. That white ring, maybe you can see it better, whichever one of those two images. And so it's kind of the opposite. So you can track your eyes and see how you're, uh, how healthy you are. The truth is, I lost mom by the time I was in my 40s. And so um, I should be paying attention to see if you can re recover it. Uh, to the best of my awareness and knowledge, I don't think you can. Uh, but uh, something, something else you can pay attention while you're looking at your eye that's on your face is take a look at your nose. So do you see these dots on your nose, on this person's nose? Uh, somebody might say, well, those are blackheads. The truth is, they're not blackheads. They're not clogged pores. These are pores that everybody has on their nose. But uh, you have this awareness pre-programmed that helps you to know what is attractive, what isn't. The reason why this one is not attractive is these, these dots here are oil that's been oxidized. So this person lives in a body that's highly inflamed and the oil within those glands become much more vulnerable to oxidation. And when oil becomes oxidized, it gets dark. Now, if you go to your mirror and you have these dots, that means you have a higher level of oxidation. And I will tell you, you are eating too much processed foods. We see this, especially, um, you know, uh, it's not as much a, a ton of you know, ground up hamburger, it's going to be muffins and donuts and, and, and cereals and pizza and things like that, mm. or the processed carbohydrates. So um, if you don't have those, that means you don't have as much, you know, levels of, of oxidation um, within you. So it, the other factor is just looking at the size of the nose. So um, this individual here has a very inflamed face and inflamed nose. And uh, over the course of one year, they've dramatically changed the appearance of their face and their size of the nose as they eliminated visceral fat. And, you know, you could open up someone's abdomen and cut out their visceral fat. But the real change in the person's life comes from their lifestyle changing, where they stop pouring on the gasoline on that fire. So they cut out processed foods, uh, which... Uh, eliminates further contribution that visceral fat. If you just did a laparotomy, which is the medical term for opening up an abdomen, and you uh, eliminated through mechanical surgical intervention the presence of visceral fat, um, you would temporarily uh, uh, improve the person's health because they won't be accumulating, but the damage would have already been done through the influence of visceral fats secretion of these inflammatory molecules. So you really haven't cured them from the harm of visceral fat. You've just eliminated visceral fat and its further contribution for a day or so. Because guess what's going to happen unless you change your life? You're going to just go back and start secreting, you know, com com greater composition and deposition of visceral fat within your abdomen. So the way to eliminate visceral fat is through lifestyle changes, 